Welcome, this is the Integrated Math 3 practice test for 10 Radio or TCAP or whatever. This is question number 12. Uh, as you can see, I've drawn a terribly bad graph on here, so awesome for me. Question says, quadrilateral LMNO has coordinates at L56, M98, N1112, and O710. How can quadrilateral LMO be classified? Now, when we name a quadrilateral, the parts should go back towards each other. So I suppose you could just say, well, how far away is 5 from 9, and this whole thing, blah, blah, blah. But to me, it makes a lot of sense to get a feel for where everything is located in space. So I drew this terrible graph. If you're not one of the types of people who need does, who needs to see it, if you are one of the people who needs to see it, just take the seconds to draw it out so you know what the heck is going on. And if you're not one of those people, then, you know, great for you. Now from this alone, I'm guessing, even if my terrible line drawing is in play. It sort of looks like a rhombus, but I don't know for sure. It's definitely not a square because there's no 90 degree angles. Um, it's a rectangle but not a square. No, no 90 degree angles again. And then I had to determine whether it's a rhombus. Um, it, it is a parallelogram it seems. So the things I need to do uh, to determine if it's a rhombus, the thing that I need to look for is whether the sides are all the same length. So in order to do that I need to find the distance of each one, which is not much fun, but you know, not impossible to do either. That you can use the distance formula or just do a really quick like Pythagorean theorem setup. Whatever the distance of the y's happens to be, and whatever the distance the x happens to be, you square each of those, add them together, square root. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's what I'm using. My a squared would be the distance between my x's, so nine and five here, and you can just do nine minus five squared plus eight minus six squared. Or you can go old school and just count. I mean, that's a thing that's still totally viable. Counting still exists, folks. It's not gone so far out of the realm of possibility that you would do that anymore. So just do 4 squared plus 6 squared. Take the square root. And that, I guess I should show that to you as opposed to just telling you that as you do. That would be super nice. Um, so 9 minus 5 is, of course, 4, plus 8 minus 2 is 6, or 8 minus 6 is 2. Yuck. I was thinking ahead here when I was doing this one. This is a 6, so it's a 2 that I'm putting in. Four squared plus two squared. Square root of 20. And then I would just do the rest of them the same way. M goes to N, so the difference between M and N is 2. And the difference between the uh, Y values would be 4. Incidentally enough, matching this exactly. So guess what? And we're just going to keep the square root of 20 as an, in our heads if we want. I mean, I guess you could do this extra step for no good reason. Why not, right? Fun. Then I'm going in, uh, in to O, so 11 to 7 would be 4, plus 12 to 10 is 2. I'm not even doing the square root part here. And then finally O goes back to L, so 7 to 5 is 2, and 10 to 6 is 4. So they're all the same. They're all square root of 20 or 4.47, depending on how you want to live your life as far as that's concerned. Um, so that's it. All the side lengths are the same, and it does have four sides. It's a closed figure, uh, so this is a rhombus. And most of that you could just figure out simply by looking at it. We know it's not a square because there's no 90 degree angle. We know it's not a rectangle because of the same reason. Um, a parallelogram but neither a rhombus nor a rectangle. That's where we're really making our differentiation. And once we figure out what the side lengths are, we're good to go to say the answer to number 12 is B. It is a rhombus, but it is not a square.